Hi there, this is Campbell and I'm going to do a video about how to fix a bug or just make some small improvement to Blender. So I'll start by opening up the IDE I'm using right now, Qt Creator. And uh, well, that and Blender. So I usually start Blender from the command line. Just got it uh, aliased to B for ease of use. And um, something I noticed before was that You've got select inverse for a cube, for example, control I, or invert, but for a lattice, it doesn't exist. It's control I, does nothing. However, select all does work. So, just for a simple to do, something that you might, you know, for a simple uh, fix, just try and get the select inverse working. So to start with, we'll just have a look at select inverse, um, how it's accessed. Now some of this stuff I do know, but I'm going to play dumb a little bit, just imagining if I was a new developer and didn't know the exact area of code to start to, to dive into. So let's just find out where select inverse is for a mesh. Okay, so it's BPY ops mesh select all action invert. So that's interesting that the select all operator has invert deselect select toggle. Okay, so let's see if this one does too. We go select deselect all. It's a pretty lonely select menu there. People haven't been developing uh, lattice code too much, so it's the same. BPO ops lattice select all. Okay, we'll see here that there is the invert option is actually there. So I'm just going to try this again. Make a small selection, hit A, and you can change it to invert. So select invert is there, it's just not uh, hooked up to a key binding, which makes this whole video a lot shorter actually, because if you had to add invert, well, there might be a little more work. But nevertheless, let's just uh, let's just add that then. Um, probably to the key binding and to the menu, may as well. Huh. So where to start? Well, first thing to do would be to find the operator in the C code. So, select all. Hmm. One of the easy ways to do this is actually to look up the tooltip. Change selection. So, all we need to do is probably do change selection. Let's just uh, change selection. Okay, so here we get all the operators. So, we've got animation markers, metaball, lattice. There we go. Okay, I'll just uh, hide that file list there. Don't really need it. And um, this is the operator. So this just defines the tool. You might not have seen this before, but uh, all the Blender operators have o uh, sort of capitals, OT, and then the name of the, the operator is the identifier. It always matches here too. All right, and uh, this operator property select all, uh, just control click on that. It happens to be a generic, uh, generic select all. So find usages, and you'll see that all the select all operators happen to use this, which is convenient. It means you don't have to have them all defining their own properties. All right, so we go back to lattice. We'll just find the lattice code, object lattice. Okay. So now we need to find the key bindings that trigger that. So I'm just going to search the operator. There are not very many places that call this. So there's the define in the header. It's pretty common. Uh, there's the the actual function. So this function gets called. Um, the string. That's the that's where it gets called. And the key map. Okay, so I'm going to bookmark that. Control M, it happens to be, but um, and look at the other parts of the code that call the select all operator. So I can just do a search for for this string here, and there'll be a few other places. Okay, so the first thing that, that I'm noticing is the difference is that this one actually defines it as toggle, whereas the lattices doesn't. Um, 
And I'll see that's important. So if I do uh, select, let's just make a new file. So lattice, lattice, select, oh yeah, select half of the points, A key, that works, select half of the points, change it to invert. Now you'll see here it's using the last used settings. I kind of guess this would be a problem, but uh, that's important because now when I'm pressing A it's doing invert and that's wrong. So one small fix would be just to copy and paste, I'll just copy the whole thing just for starters, uh, to copy and paste that, uh, that assignment there that it does need to tell it that it's going to be explicitly toggle, otherwise it'll just keep using whatever setting was, was last. Not very exciting stuff, I'm sorry, maybe you should have added a modifier or something, but that probably would have been like a four hour video, so <sighs> just do a just do a quick one. So I'll just go back. Uh let us select all, do a search. Well I've bookmarked it actually, haven't I? So it's going through other going through other bookmarks actually that I've set previous to recording this, so I'll just okay. Just cycles through. So we've got the the armature select all. We'll just copy and paste what happens here, which is to set the action to toggle. Okay, just see if that works. Should work. KMI, that's being used already. So that don't need to define a new property or anything. Um I have to quit Blender. And we'll just quickly test that it verify it works. Select all. Select inverse. Hm. Try it again. Invert. Now when I do select all, it goes back to toggle. So that that works. Now you want to add the inverse key. So for that, I'll just do another search. I'm just going to search for this string here because I know it exists somewhere else. I'll turn off regular expressions, that'll help. Okay. And here there will be an invert I would expect. Okay, here we go. Here's the invert. So control I is invert. So copy this in. Is uh, This code has indentation a bit different, which is, I don't know, if you're picky you might complain about that stuff. I'm just going to not worry about it. And use what's being used here. Um, select all action. It looks like that's all that needs to be done, which makes this pretty simple. Okay. Try it again. My dog's just walked in the room and yawning next to me and nagging me to probably give it a, a W. A L K. Can't use the word. All right. Otherwise you'll get excited. Okay, so control I, you can't really see it. It's working here, but you can probably hear by the click that control I is working, so that's good. Now to add the menu. Uh, so select all. Look at the menu here. My dog's crying, but he should be quite pleased. Uh, edit source. This is a little tricky thing here that I've, I've demoed before actually, but you can right click edit source. Huh. It can't be found. That's bad and not tricky. Okay, let's ignore that then. Uh, it only works, actually, I should say, it only works on sort of buttons in the panel. It doesn't work on buttons in the menu yet. It's a bit more involved doing that. So, lattice select all. All right. So, I'll just go to Blender's uh, scripts directory, release scripts, and do a search. Now, this is the way that I usually search for stuff, is to use a grep wrapper, and I'm call I've called it prep which is like Python grep. So just do a quick, bleh, quick search. Okay, it's not very useful. Maximize it. Okay, so lots of, um, lots of add-ons are actually selecting all here, which is not that useful. So just to trim down the results a bit, I'll, um, I'll go into the user interface directory. So with even without knowing where it is, you could look at it and you can kind of see that startup, blender UI, uh, 
is where all the menu items are because the other otherwise the add-ons and yeah just contrib add-ons and add-ons there are a few presets but that's for well that's for the Maya key binding so we don't care about that okay it's gonna CD into there clear the screen and search again now this is a bit more useful now so um there's a few here and we're going to be interested in the view 3d the view 3d items okay so let's just try one of them we'll do a search once we're there okay um I'm just going to copy this because I know I'm going to need to use it later, even though it's not for the objects, and do a search for lattice. And lo and behold, we hit upon the right the right part. There aren't really many le menus for lattice, so alrighty. And just have to copy and paste that there. This is this is actually all very trivial. Uh, it's a bit weird that this says select these, select all, and the next one's in first. So I'm just going to check to see what other tools do just to be consistent for this. Oh well, there we go. Oh no, they do the same thing. Select these, select all, and in first. That's cool. Just save that. There's not going to be any problems there. I'll just close it. Uh, go back to Blender. And start. Uh, by the way, even though this is pretty boring, lots of to-dos in Blender are boring. Well, I should put it differently. There are a lot of little things that need adding in Blender that aren't totally exciting. So here we go, it works. Um, all right, so that's finished. Now, as a part of the video, I'm gonna commit. Uh, you'll need access to uh, being a Blender developer. You'll need commit rights to commit, but for add-ons, you can get that quite easily. If you have an add-on and you like to like to work in our SVN, you can just ask us and show that you've got a useful add-on and we'll pretty much give you commit access. All right, so before committing though, I'm just gonna do a diff. And that's just important to make sure that I know what I'm actually committing. Maybe I added a print or some sort of comment in or I was working on something the day before. And in that case, I don't wanna commit that. So I'm gonna do a diff repository. And this is nice, it just shows that uh, it shows the Python code too. It shows everything that's been changed. All right, it's good, and I can do a commit from from Qt Creator as well. I actually don't always use this. Um, quite happy to. That's interesting. Oops, I quit by accident. Okay. actually only shows the SVN menu when you're not in the diff view. Little oddity there. Commit all files. Okay, it shows what we're changing. You can click on it. Just look at the difference for that file, but since it's only two, it's pretty easy. So, um, No, I won't bother saying that. Just add select invert the lattice is enough. Commit. Takes a few seconds. Okay. Now I think most developers uh, do, hmm, probably most active, active developers do read the commit log. So I'm just gonna open up a browser here in my email. Hmm, I don't know if I should be showing everyone my email. Hopefully there's nothing incriminating there. It's all pretty boring. <laughs> okay. Um, and here we go. So I've got my uh, commits filtered and I've got them filtered also so they mark my own as red so I don't end up reading my own commit logs. But just to see here, um, people read the blender commit log we'll get this list and they'll see what's what's been going on and you know there's other things that have been changing too so I will often read this and see what's been going on see what 
this is actually a script that I wrote that someone else has been modifying or Luca so it's you know I would read that and check to see that it's all has made good changes okay uh, I think that wraps it up um, I hope that was useful it was a little tedious or not that exciting at least but at least it shows you the round trip from looking into a feature to committing a fix for it okay bye bye